Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Nikita, welcome to the Cryptos channel and in today's video we're going to have a look at what the Tron blockchain is and its native token TRX. We will have a look at the functionality of the project, what it's supposed to be when it's completely built and finished, so how it's going to look like in the future, what it's made for, and also we will compare the Tron blockchain with the Ethereum blockchain, so let's start with the video. First of all, let's get into what the Tron blockchain actually is. It's a project dedicated to the establishment of a truly decentralized internet. And this means it can run smart contracts, it can run dApps on its own blockchain, its native currency and other tokens. And of course, uh, it's there for really fast and cheap transactions. Tron was funded by Justin Sun in the year 2017 and already in the summer of 2018, the project launched. And of course, it has its own native token called TRX, which is used for paying for transaction fees and of course, for staking on the blockchain. The Tron blockchain is built using delegated proof of stake consensus mechanism and the way it's also built is that the Tron blockchain has 27 super representatives which are basically node validators and it has 100 other super partners and let's find out what both of the groups are actually doing inside the blockchain. The super partners are basically nothing else than node validators so they decide which uh, transactions go into the blockchain and which don't fit there and don't go onto the blockchain. The way you can become a uh, full node and validate the transaction actually in theory anyone can become it but but only 27 slots or spots for becoming a super representatives are available. So what you need to do is open your node and then have other people's stake or TRX tokens be delegated towards your node or you have uh, by yourself a lot of coins and you can run your own node, but uh, this is probably not the case. So basically there's a ranking from one to basically infinity and the amount of staked or delegated coins for each node and the top one to 27 nodes are the validating nodes on the blockchain. In the same list, the node numbers 28 to 127, so basically 100 other nodes, can uh, be called super partners. They're not the same as uh, super representatives. They cannot validate blocks, but they can take part in the governance of the blockchain. So basically they can vote for taking a decision or for deslining a decision which is or a proposal which is made towards updating the blockchain. So here the way the infrastructure of this blockchain works is that we have a limited number of possibly working simultaneous validator nodes and nodes all know uh, on the blockchain. So this means that it's a blockchain somewhere between Ethereum where we have uh, basically an unlimited possible amount of nodes because everybody can uh, start mining Ethereum and run their own node and something between XRP, Ripple or for example Stellar which has a federative blockchain type and you can beca cannot become a validator without the invitation of uh, all the other nodes. So this is with the Tron blockchain somewhere in the middle. Here is the list of the nodes which are currently validating the Tron blockchain. And as you can see, these are really popular companies in the crypto space. So for example, it's Binance taking, it's JD Investments, it's the exchange Poloniex and Ant Investment Group. So basically there are lots of foundations, there are lots of ex exchanges which are running their own nodes, which are people uh, delegating their coins towards to. And so the nodes are the main validators of the Tron blockchain. As a normal blockchain user, you're probably not have enough TRX tokens to run your own node and be in the top 25, top 27 list of the validating nodes. Neither will you probably have enough delegated tokens towards your node, so you can be in the top 27. So what you can do if you want, if you still want to earn passive income from the Tron blockchain in the form of staking, is you can delegate your tokens that you have to some other node, which you can have find in this uh, list over here. And basically, by delegating your Tron TRX, it's still staking. You're still getting passive income from the Tron, and so uh, the total reward rate annually is right now for staking your Tron, it's 2.57%. Uh, so basically it ranges somewhere between 2.5% and 4% annually, depending on the stakers and some other conditions on the blockchain. But this is the approximate income which you can get. Of course, this doesn't sound like a lot, especially in the crypto space, but if you're planning on holding your TRX tokens anyway for a long period of time, uh, you can still stake them and you will get a little bit of passive income, which uh, won't hurt, definitely. And another important thing is that you can remove your tokens from the stake at any point of time. So if you're not using your TRX tokens right now, you can basically stake them and earn some extra TRX tokens on top of this. 
Considering the blockchain itself, it allows for 2000 transactions to be happened per second with the time rate of three blocks per second, which is really, really good. And the thing is that the competitor Ethereum or the project, because Ethereum is a project really like Tron, it's just a little bit slower or a lot slower. It allows only for 20 to 25 transactions per second at this point of time, which is of course a massive difference. On the other hand, the Tron blockchain also supports smart contracts. It also supports decentralized applications, and it also supports the minting of some different and tokens on the Tron blockchain. So all in all, you can imagine Tron's functionality just the same way you imagine Ethereum, just the transactions are faster, there can be more of them in the same period of time. There are also smart contract, different DEXs and dif different DApps, which can run on the Tron blockchain. So basically it's uh, a really alike ecosystem to the Ethereum blockchain, just uh, more scalable than it is on Ethereum. But still there are some small differences between the blockchains and especially in the way the transaction cost is being calculated. As you're familiar with Ethereum, Ethereum, I guess, you know that there is a gas fee or a gas price for the Ethereum transactions. The gas price can either grow or shrink depending on the uh, loaded amount of transactions on the Ethereum network. So the more people use it in the network, uh, the higher the gas price gets because there, there is more demand for this. Now, this is not the case on the Tron blockchain. To calculate the transaction fee, you need basically two different types of fuels on the Tron blockchain, not just one Ethereum uh, like uh, you're using on the Ethereum blockchain. Here in Tron, you've got the energy calculator or the energy as a resource for paying for your transactions and the bandwidth, which uh, is also a form of dig digital resource for paying the transactions. And uh, the main idea behind this is not to use uh, the network's uh, loading amount, how many transactions are surpassing there right now, but uh, to look at the amount of data and injury your wallet wants to pass over the blockchain and then calculate uh, the amount of work uh, the blockchain has to do depending on the amount of data which is being passed through the blockchain. So to pay for a transaction on the Tron blockchain, you can imagine it like a gas tank with uh, two different fuels. First here you got the bandwidth and then second of all you've got the energy tank and so once you've sent a transaction, both of, the, both of the tanks are getting a little bit emptier because both of the resources are being used simultaneously. In order to obtain the bandwidth, uh, you basically have got two options. You you can either freeze your uh, TRX tokens for a short period of time and so get some bandwidth to fuel your transaction or your account because basically every account is getting uh, 5,000 bandwidth uh, every day and 5,000 bandwidth uh, for free and this is enough for about 15 to 20 transactions in 24 hours so I didn't uh, really get a problem anytime I was using the Tron blockchain that I was out of bandwidth. The second resource for fueling the transactions is the energy and it's basically more scarce than bandwidth because you're not getting any free energy, uh, actually never. Uh, there are also two possibilities for getting energy. Either you're burning uh, your TRX tokens for uh, obtaining some energy. So basically you're paying a transaction fee in TRX tokens just as you would do on the Ethereum blockchain. Or you can uh, freeze your TRX tokens for 72 hours and get some more energy. And uh, freezing the TRX tokens is actually the proper way for paying for your transactions because the tokens are being returned after some period of time. And so uh, the transaction becomes basically free because uh, you get the free bandwidth, you're f you have frozen the energy, uh, you've frozen, I'm sorry, the TRX tokens, you've got some free energy, and basically you're using the Tron blockchain almost for free or actually for free. The only thing to consider is that if you're freezing your tokens, you basically can transfer them out of the wallet in case if you need them. So keep this thing in mind if you're freezing the tokens and not burning them. Of course, for if you're freezing tokens, you'll freeze a bigger amount of tokens than you would just burn. But nevertheless, it uh, doesn't matter if you freeze the tokens or burn them, the transaction cost on the Tron blockchain is really, really low. So it's literally uh, either free or it's a few cents. And because the transaction, transactions are so cheap on the Tron blockchain, uh, a lot of stable coins and different other coins and projects are being minted there right now and being built on Tron just because of how simple, fast, scalable, and again, cheap the blockchain is. <laughs> So now that we understand how the Tron blockchain is going to work and how the transactions are being calculated, let's dive a little bit deeper into what the use case of the Tron blockchain is going to be and how it's going to be used in the broader space. Of course, it will be a base for the Web3 internet. So basically a place where all users own their own data and uh, it's not owned by third party companies, like for example, big social media networks and some other platforms, basically any centralized platform. The Web3, to keep it short, will open a lot of possibilities to the users and and 
as we just already said, it will allow them to keep their own data, to man monetize their own data. So for example, if you're watching ads, you're becoming, you're getting the revenue of the ads and not the, again, Facebook or for example, Instagram, which is showing you the ads. So basically you're becoming tokens for this. You will also keep, uh, get some uh, different items on different platforms, we could, which you can transfer from platform to platform. And you can also, get and collect reputation probably the reputation will be counted in the form of some tokens where you're handy or helpful for some community you're being rewarded with the tokens and so they're being either used for paying something or just as a kind of status or appreciation in order to accomplish this of course you need first of all decentralized applications these may be like decentralized networks all games or social media networks doesn't matter actually and the tokens where they were going to live in so basically a base a platform where this all will be interconnected and this is actually what tron is going to deliver Deliver, what it wants to deliver so basically a platform for d apps for tokens and for this little ecosystem or web3 uh, internet which uh, we just described in order to accomplish this tron has a lot of really really big partners and these are not all the ones it's all the companies is partnered with listed here but these are the main ones it's polonius the exchange you all probably heard about it's samsung it's bittorrent bittorrent was actually bought by uh, by Tron, by the Tron Foundation for $100 million, about $100 million. They don't, uh, sell, they don't say the exact price. Also, the Swisscom blockchain, Opera, and it has a lot of other partners which uh, help, the, help them build the technology, test the technology, and basically integrate different changes and uh, improvement into the Tron blockchain itself. A really important thing about Tron is also to mention that it's not only one network. The Tron blockchain has also a lot of side chains, which one of them is, for example, the the Tron Sun network and the side chains are made to keep uh, less transactions on the Tron blockchain itself to keep it more clean to keep it fast and uh, also cheaper uh, they're basically built for taking off the transaction load to a different blockchain the way they work they're completely compatible with the Tron blockchain so basically the tokens on the on the uh, Sun network and on the Tron blockchain and also all the different sidechains are interoperable and they're interconnected so basically they use the same token format but they use different validators and this is the key part so the Tron blockchain has one set of validators and the Sun network may have some different validators validating the blockchain so this way the resources are more distributed and basically uh, the blockchain uh, can handle more transactions because the transactions transactions are all on different chains a great example of a sidechain is just to give you a visual is for example the just network which is considered as the DeFi hub for the tron network so basically all the dapp applications or the DeFi applications or the dapps which are used for financial services for exchanges for farming and for lending protocols they're all lo located on this sidechain so basically this is the financial sidechain of the tron blockchain and uh, that's what it's used for lots of transactions are happening here and so uh, the the good thing about this is that they don't happen on the tron main chain so basically the Tron main chain can handle more different transaction types and so uh, this is the way the ecosystem is basically working so if we compare the Tron blockchain and the Ethereum blockchain side by side, then we definitely see the Tron has more advanced and better technologies than its ancestor Ethereum. But the thing is, there is still a lot more liquidity, many times more liquidity on the Ethereum blockchain than on the Tron blockchain. The reason for this is, is that Ethereum was one of the first proper blockchains at back in 2015, which allowed its developers to build their own smart contract DApps and its own tokens on the Ethereum blockchain. So a lot or all developers went there and because there was no alternative at this point of time so basically the most of liquidity was consolidating there for many many years just because just before 2018 2019 2020 where all these different new chains were starting to show up but by this time most of the money in blockchain and in DeFi and uh, in the cryptocurrency space was already on bitcoin and ethereum so this is basically the reason why the developers on the ethereum blockchain don't hurry to move to change the chain of their project so basically to move to binance smart chain or to tron even just because uh, the thing is that they will have a lot less liquidity there and this would be not an economically right decision because they would make less earnings if less liquidity would surpass their for example DEX or liquidity uh, farming protocol or anything other that they were building on the other hand lots of new different developers are building their dApps on protocols like Tron, Solana uh, even Binance Smart Chain just because they're faster better and the community can use them more easier and of course with uh, more cheaper transactions and uh, this is kind of th this is the kind of thing even though we've got 
better technologies right now on different chains and so uh, we've got more liquidity on an order chain it's really hard to move all the liquidity at once just to make it economically more correct for the newer projects especially and especially for the older projects to change their chains this definitely is going to change in the future in the next coming years but now is definitely not the time just because the critical mass of dApps and so uh, different applications on blockchains like tron and some other blockchains is just not there yet so there are not enough users or basically there are not enough applications to bring all the needed users to create high liquidity on these blockchains so they have plenty of room to grow and they need to make lots of de development they need many many more developers just to make uh, the liquidity on these chains higher getting back to the example of tron it definitely does have everything it needs to create like a new little foundation for the web3 but the thing is again the liquidity problem that it needs just some more time to naturally go grow to get new developers to get new users on its blockchain our team of course does hold tron and so we hold it for a long period of time and we'll hold it for a long period of time just because we believe that it's going to be a really important key role in all the cryptocurrency space in the uh some distant future so in like two three to four years where the technology where the liquidity will be enough to really bring lots of people to the blockchain but not yet but now we've got like really good prices for it and this is a no means financial advice we just took all the info that we had and so uh, put it in a little video so you can get more information on this maybe makes your own research after watching this video and then take your own uh, decision about buying the trx coins or not and that's actually the end of the video i really hope you enjoyed it that you learned something new and that the video especially was helpful for you and thank you so much for watching we'll see each other in the next videos Bye-bye.